But I guess the historian in me uh, has become increasingly skeptical that we should be confident of the democratic future. Um, my father, who's an ancient historian and was particularly a historian, is a historian of ancient Greece and Athens in particular, uh, always told me that democracy was a very rare and fragile flower. Uh, and historically, that has certainly been true. My focus, I have to say, tends to be more uh, at the geopolitical level. And I am inclined to believe that it is uh, not enough to have the pieces in place in governments around, in, in nations around the world, or in city-states around the world even, uh, for the evolution of democracy. That whether that evolution actually takes place or not depends on uh, the configuration of power at the top level uh, among the great powers who, have, who wield inordinate influence, not only on international relations, but on the internal evolution of societies whom they do have influence over. And so for me, the question really is, um, in the current circumstance, you know, how much of the enormous spread of democracy uh, that we witnessed, especially beginning in the late 1970s and going through the full, what Sam Huntington referred to as the third wave, how much of that was just natural evolution and how much of it was shaped by the fact that the strongest power in the world uh, and really at that moment sort of increasingly strong, although it didn't seem so perhaps at the beginning, uh, you know, l produced a situation where democracies, because it was a democracy, where democracies spread. And Huntington, who, you know, like any good intellectual, changed his mind four or five times over the course of his life. But in, if you go back and read his book on the third wave, uh, he gives the United States quite a lot of responsibility uh, for that trend. Uh, not only in terms of what we refer to as democracy promotion, sort of positive efforts, but uh, in many respects, more importantly, in the prevention of overthrows of democracy. Uh, he cites, I think, at least 20 occasions where the United States government prevented coups, uh, particularly in Latin America, but not only in Latin America, that might have led to the overthrow of democracy. So merely by sort of intervening uh, at a critical moment to prevent a reversal of democracy, in some of these countries, uh, in many of these countries, democracy really took root and kept going. Is it, is it really true that all things being equal, democracy necessarily wins? I'm not sure. It seems to me that we have to reconcile ourselves to the fact that while democracy appeals to things that human beings want, authoritarianism must also. And I think the history suggests that there are appealing aspects whether it's, we say the authoritarians are stirring up nationalism, well, it's there to be stirred up. A feeling of community, a feeling of people acting as one, and especially after disillusionment with democratic experiments. I mean, there's no question that Germans were disillusioned by the experience of Weimar, or that Russians were disillusioned by the experience of, Yeltsin, of the Yeltsin years, of the 1990s, for all kinds of perfectly legitimate reasons. Um, which means that in, that in those situations, authoritarianism also had its appeal. The idea, as Frank says in his Wall Street Journal piece, that democracies are, one of the reasons that authoritarianism is advancing is because democracies are not doing a good job at home. Well, what's new? You know, that's not new. The democracies have frequently failed to deliver in, in one way or another. So the struggle is on, I guess, is my point, and the struggle is eternal. It doesn't go away. The longest running struggle in recent history, and I'm talking about, as a historian, recent me means several hundred years. The recent struggle is not between communism and capitalism, or between communism and democracy, or even between fascism and democracy. The struggle that goes back, certainly to uh, the time of the American and French revolutions, has been between autocracy and, liber and liberalism. That, has, that struggle has gone on and it continues today. Temptation is always there. And for all we know, the more natural situation for human beings is in fact living under authoritarian rule. 
and that what we've been witnessing has been an aberration, has been a pushing against trend. Um, if that's true, then it will only persist if we continue to push. Because I think the jungle will grow back otherwise. And we'll find that a lot of countries that we've gotten used to seeing as democracies will cease to be democracies. It's just a fact, I think, that democracy will sometimes be discredited by either itself or by circumstances. Then the question becomes, is there anything that we can do to nevertheless keep it from going off the tracks? In the case of big countries that are not dependent on the United States, in a way, I think it's always going to be very hard. And you know, just to round out the picture of what I was saying before, it's no accident that the countries where we have been most successful in, uh, in fostering this movement toward democracy have either been under our occupation or dependent on the United States in some way. Um, we've had very little success converting countries that were, not, were neither of those that really in some respects were either adversaries or entirely outside the American orbit. I don't think the Morsi government was an enemy of the United States. I don't even think the Morsi government was an enemy of Israel, really. I mean, if you look at what they actually did, they did not, in fact, break out of the treaty. They did not, in fact, become, and, and the, the most important thing about the Morsi government is that they didn't control the military, which, was, which gave us an opportunity, uh, I think. And uh, I think it was a mistake not to uh, put you use our influence with the Morsi government to get them to behave better, and then also use our influence with the Egyptian military for them not to coup. And I think we could have lived with uh, a democratic, I mean, we are gonna have to, there's, we have two choices in the Middle East. I'm, I'm not ignoring your question, but I'm most exercised by this question. <laughs> and I'm, then, I'm, then I'm gonna come back to your question. We have two choices, it seems to me, in the Middle East. We can attempt to support when the opportunity arises, as it did in Egypt, something like Islamic democracy, or we can just say, we're gonna support every military regime in the, in the, in the region that, that promises to kill as many Islamists as it possibly can, which is the Egyptian government's policy. I don't know that, in which case, you know, I believe we're gonna get the worst of all worlds. We're gonna get Islamic radicalism run rampant and we're gonna lose these governments that we think are helping us. And we had a difficult but nevertheless, I think, important route into what I think is inevitable, was gonna be inevitably this sort of interesting experiment of, of Islamism and democracy. I think we now are not, I'm not sure that option is left to us anymore, in which case we will certainly pursue the course that you're talking about. <laughs> you know, whether, whether that leads us to convert Egyptian militarism, militarist, military regime into democracy, I also am very skeptical about. I, I, the, one of the most astonishing things about Egypt, setting aside what you may or may not think about what the right policy is, our aid package to Egypt has not changed by a, practically by a dollar through four successive different types of government. It's, it's basically the structure that was in place when Mubarak was in office. So we've gone from Mubarak to the revolution against Mubarak to the SCAF to Morsi to the, to the military coup. And the one thing that you can always count on is not only that American aid will be coming, but it's gonna be coming in exactly the same structure. I mean, really, is that, can that possibly be? So what signal are we sending? We are signaling sending we don't care about democracy in Egypt, thank you. That's a very simple message that we are sending. Now again, we can argue about whether we should care, uh, and I and I can take this argument and go on and have it for the next five years, but what, in terms of what signal we're sending, then that's definitely the signal we're sending, and that's the way it is.